YouTube recently changed the requirements for monetization of a new channel. The new requirements make it much harder to qualify. Now, a channel must have at least 4,000 hours of view time in the past year, and must have 1,000 subscribers. As you see, I'm over halfway to the 4,000 hours, but I need more of you to subscribe. If you are enjoying or learning from my videos, please subscribe to this channel. Thanks. Hello, I'm Not Chuck. In this video, I will continue discussing lead-acid batteries with the goal of preparing you to choose the best batteries for your van or RV. The series of videos is intended to help you make good decisions on choosing batteries for your particular situation. The idea is not to tell you what to buy, but rather to help you understand the facts and apply them to best suit your wants, needs, and abilities. I'll put a link in the upper right corner of the screen to the entire series. Now, let's conclude battery specifications as they are commonly presented on manufacturers' data sheets. We're still working from the data sheet for the Trojan 30XHS flooded lead-acid battery. If you have a copy, get it out now for reference and notes. At the bottom left corner of the first page, there's a block labeled Operational Data. The right side of that block is the self-discharge section and refers to the fact that lead-acid batteries will lose charge over time even when no external load is connected. The rate is moderately low and is dependent upon the temperature of the battery. Batteries stored in hot conditions will self-discharge faster than those stored in cold conditions. However, given enough time, all lead-acid batteries will completely self-discharge all the way down to 10.5 volts. Even at the lowest estimated self-discharge rate, it would only take 20 months. That is important for batteries you already own, but it can be even more important for new batteries that may sit on retailer shelves for long periods before they are bought. Be sure to check the manufacture date on every battery you are planning to buy and buy the freshest ones available. The left side of the block deals with the recommended operating temperature of the 30XHS battery. From minus 4 degrees Fahrenheit to plus 113 degrees Fahrenheit. There's a graph on the back page of the data sheet that helps to show why. As you can see, the available capacity of the battery depends heavily on the temperature. At high temperatures, the battery has plenty of capacity available, but much less at low temperatures. If we plot the two extreme temperatures on the graph, the picture becomes clearer. Now you can see why so many auto starting batteries that work fine in warm weather fail in the first cold snap of the winter. Even at 32 degrees F, a battery will have lost a considerable amount of its potential just due to the temperature. If the battery is only partially charged, that makes the condition even worse. For example, if a battery is only 60% charged and the temperature is 32 degrees F, the capacity is reduced to 60% of 70%, which is 42%. That's a good reason to avoid discharging your battery below 80% if possible and to never go below 50% charge. I'll have more to say about that throughout this video. Here is another graph from the data sheet that provides some useful information. It's the performance graph and is also on the rear page of the data sheet. The graph actually shows something you should already know from the previous video and from common sense. The more current that is drawn from the battery, as shown on the vertical axis, the less time it will take the battery to discharge, as shown on the horizontal axis. Notice the two scales. The vertical scale is discharge current as measured in amps, and the horizontal scale is time in minutes. Take a close look at the horizontal lines in the graph. Notice that as the numbers increase, the distance between the lines decreases. Now look at the vertical lines in the graph. Although the distance between the lines is uniform, each new line represents a tenfold increase in time. That is an indication that neither scale is linear. The red arrow points approximately to where the diagonal maroon line crosses the 25 amp horizontal line and the 225 minute vertical line. That simply means that if the battery is discharged at a rate of 25 amperes, it will be completely discharged in 225 minutes. 
If we move the red arrow to point to where the diagonal maroon line crosses the 75 amp horizontal line, it points to the 57 minute vertical line. That means that if the battery is discharged at a rate of 75 amperes, it will be completely discharged in only 57 minutes. Any other place along the diagonal maroon line will provide the discharge time at varying discharge rates. It's a graphical way of showing that the relationship between discharge rates that we have already seen in the electrical characteristics table. This example also demonstrates again that the relationship between current drawn and discharge time is not linear. The capacity goes down much faster than the current goes up. If you're looking closely at the data sheet, you may have noticed a couple of tables that have to do with charging the Trojan 30XHS battery. They are important, but we won't study them until we get to battery installation and maintenance. This table is very important contains a lot of information, but it's really easy to understand. It shows the percentage of charge left in the battery based on three different measurements. The specific gravity of the electrolyte, the voltage of a single cell, and the voltage of the entire battery. We'll study specific gravity during the installation and maintenance video. For now, we will focus on the battery voltage in the right-hand column as compared to the percentage of charge in the left-hand column. For example, the 30XHS battery is considered 50% discharged when its voltage drops to 12.10 volts. Notice that charge percentages are shown from 10% up to 100%. What about 0%, you might ask? And here's the answer. Any 12 volt lead acid battery is considered completely discharged when its voltage drops to 10.5 volts. Here I have added color to the chart to indicate the level of discharge that I want to avoid for my batteries. My strong preference is to keep them charged to 80% or more, and I never ever want them discharged more than 50%. Here's why. This graph is from Rolls Battery Engineering, another maker of good deep cycle batteries. Notice that the vertical axis on the left is the number of charge and discharge cycles that you might get from a certain battery. The horizontal axis on the bottom is the percentage of discharge that the battery is routinely subjected to. Notice that if a battery is routinely discharged by only 20%, that is kept charged to 80%, its life expectancy is about 1,600 discharge and recharge cycles. But if the same battery is routinely discharged by 50%, its life expectancy drops to just over 1,000 cycles. That's quite a drop and one that I want to avoid. Here's a similar graph from Century Batteries. Following the red line, which represents flooded lead-acid batteries, notice that a routine 20% discharge yields a life expectancy of 3,300 charge cycles. But if the same battery is routinely discharged by 50%, the life expectancy drops to 1,150 cycles. At a routine 100% discharge rate, the life expectancy drops to 500 cycles. And you do remember what the voltage of a 100% discharged lead acid battery is, don't you? And no, it's not zero volts. I hope you remember that any 12 volt lead acid battery is considered fully discharged when it drops to 10.5 volts. So the next time someone tells you that they routinely discharge their lead acid batteries down to nothing with no damage to the batteries, you'll know better. You should remember these tables from the first video in the series. The top table lists the three general uses for lead acid batteries and suggests which of the three might be suitable for use as a house battery in a van or RV. The bottom table lists the three primary technologies used to build lead acid batteries and identifies which of them are prevented from spilling. Both tables have a column added to identify the relative cost associated with each choice. Taken collectively, there are nine possible combinations of the choices. However, I want to reduce that number from nine to three. 
Although not an absolute rule, for most people the best choice for an RV or van house battery is a true deep cycle, and that is what we will focus on as we go forward. But which true deep cycle lead acid battery is best for you? Flooded, AGM, or gel? I had hoped to cover that during this video, but it will have to hold until next time. In the meanwhile, I want to tell you that many battery manufacturers provide not only data sheets, but also have user guides for their deep cycle batteries. A web search will uncover lots of information for you to study if you want to learn more about lead acid batteries and make the most of the money you spend on them. Next time, I will provide a list of the pros and cons of the three main types of lead acid batteries. Thanks for watching. Please comment, give me a thumbs up, and most of all, please subscribe. Until next time, remember, I'm not Chuck.